Welcome to the April edition of the International Spotlight Program. I'm so happy to be joined by Dr. Lena Triana, who's the president of the Colombian Society of Plastic, Aesthetic, Maxillofacial, and Hand Surgery. Welcome, Dr. Triana. Uh, hi, Fire Dry. It's an honor to be here with you, and it's an honor to be part of the Aesthetic Surgery Journal. And we feel the same way. So, we are here today to talk about the increase in uh, female genital surgery. And the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery just recently released its new statistics report. And they indicate that the um, labiaplasty, not vaginal rejuvenation, but specifically labiaplasty, was the 19th most performed surgical procedure last year with 10,774 performed. So there's an increase in these type of procedures, so much so that the journal launched a new section called Genital Rejuvenation last year to accommodate all the new research. So we'd like to hear from you with your international perspective about what you're seeing in terms of trends and uh, how you manage that uh, in your practice. Well, definitely it's a trend that keeps on increasing and increasing every year. Also, if we see at the ASAP statistics, it, it, it increased 23% from the last statistics you had. So it's going on and on. Absolutely. So definitely, it, it, it's something that it's not only in the U.S., it's happening all over the world. Why? Well, maybe because um, today, uh, we women uh, are more empowered, not only uh, of our, our own life, not only in our, for example, in our working life, in, in our working atmospheres, but also we are empowered with our sexuality and that gives us one thing more that we really want to improve. Of course, uh, we see the trend, for example, in South America is a big thing now. Why? I think Latin women are a little bit more open to talk about these, these, these areas. And uh, as traditionally has been seen, static plastic surgery in South America is something that, that is more of a common. Everybody wants it. Everybody do it. Uh, we have a tropical climate all year round that, that helps that our women show a little bit more uh, regarding how they dress. And they are not uh, afraid or a little bit uh, ashamed of talking about themselves and of talking about these type of procedures. So, Dr. Triana, how do you think um, this is culturally in terms of what you're seeing in Colombia? You talked about the climate and some of those uh, details. Here in the United States, you travel a lot. What are you seeing in, in other countries? Do you see the trend as the same? Uh, is there excitement, enthusiasm about these procedures? Uh, what do you see when you travel and when you network at conferences with colleagues? Well, definitely, uh, as you know, I've been lecturing in vaginal rejuvenation a long time ago, many years ago. And uh, I really, really am very excited from what I see, not only towards patient trends, but from what I see from my colleagues. Uh, before we talk about 2008, 2009, when I lectured about vaginal rejuvenation, labioplasty, vaginoplasty, it was almost like a taboo. And uh, a lot of the doctors, my colleagues, plastic surgeons, would usually say, oh, that's not worth it. Sometimes they would get in the, 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 the meeting, and sometimes they just thought it was, okay, that, that should not, that's not worth it. But today, when you go to a meeting, the, the, the auditorium is full. So you really see that Plastic surgeons want to learn more and more and more about it. And actually, that's what you guys did in the aesthetic uh, surgery journal. You, 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 today, we now have a, a whole section here. So because really, there's a, a true and sincere, uh, let's say, wanting from all of our colleagues to learn more about aesthetic vagina plastic surgery. And of course, also, it's very uh, nice and, and, and very, how do you say Receiving to, to, to see that in our meetings, even in the big meetings, we have uh, sections that are only for vagina plastic surgery. So, again, it's not only a patient's trend, uh, trend, it's something that our colleagues have started to understand that it's, it's something that we should offer to our patients, uh, not only because it's a trend, but because it really helps my patient. Uh, sometimes, if we saw uh, past tests or old textbooks, or again, meetings regarding vaginal plastic surgery, uh, you could see only sections talking about labioplasty. Mm -hmm. What is labioplasty? Labioplasty mainly is cutting the labia menorah, and that's it. And I always try to encourage all of my colleagues that if you approach this surgery only by cutting the labia menorah, 
That's a total incorrect approach. Why? You need to talk about the whole genital area to really deliver a, a good surgery, surgical plan and to really have happy patients. Uh, we all know that, for example, when we talk about lava menorah, uh, they are sometimes very long and they bother my patients uh, when they're doing exercise, uh, they're uncomfortable, uh, they don't look nice, and also uh, uh, when there's excess amount of uh, mucosa or skin around the clitoris hood, you know it can look like a penis, not nice, it can... Uh, uh, how you say, help with bad odor there because it, it, it's more uh, difficult to clean the area. And other areas such as the pubic area or the cranial area are not nice also and can be helped. And of course, a lot of majora that with time, uh, everything loosens and the genital area is not, it's not an exception. And as we go more and more, grow more and more in time, uh, we lose tissue there so they look savvy, shaggy and savvy and we don't like the appearance. So all of that can be constructed when we talk about external vaginal uh, plastic surgery or genital aesthetic plastic surgery. So if, oh, now I tell my, my, my colleagues, if you only take one thing back home when I'm lecturing them, I always tell them, please forget about only lagoplasty. You have, you have to look at the whole picture to have a happy patient. And of course, now vagina rejuvenation, that is the vagina tightening, is getting more and more on trend. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, as I told you at the beginning, today we are empowered with our sexuality. We want to lead not only in the aspects of family as we did, as leaders of our home, uh, we're also leaders in our work. Yeah, mm -hmm. And now we are also leaders in our sexual life. So that's why more and more patients are asking for it. Because women today are empowered with their whole life. Thank you. Uh, so I think it's very nice and pleasant to see uh, we plastic surgeons can deliver this to my patients and can see how they really are happy not only for themselves but for their couple life uh, as a couple and of course in all of her aspects of her life. So really, really, uh, I do encourage for any plastic surgeons that do not do now vagina plastic surgery procedures, vagina rejuvenation procedures or the genital aesthetic plastic surgery procedures to start doing it. It's, it's a must today. And of course, we all know that it's not only the surgical part, there's also a trend on all the non-surgical areas of the vaginal rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. There are lots of machines today that we can use for vagina tightening. Of course, I always uh, tell my, my colleagues when I lecture, if we're thinking, for example, on a patient that had a baby, and she has a, a, a savvy, a shaggy, or whatever how you say, the abdomen area, mm -hmm. and we need her, uh, or she wants a tight abdomen, then I cannot tell her, just go ahead and do some uh, push-ups, or go ahead and do this treatment with this machine, and you will have your abdomen exactly the same as you had it before. Sure. That's not nice to tell to the patient, because she will be frustrated. We all know that there's a lot of skin, loose skin, and a lot of loose muscle. We need a surgery to be done that way. So again, this new trend on non-surgical uh, uh, machines for treatment for vaginal plastic surgery or genital aesthetic surgery, they're very good. I use them all. I use radio frequency. I use lasers. I use fillers uh, because, again, uh, the final results, it's, it's like a sum up of a lot of things. But we need to understand that for some patients, we need a surgical approach and for others, we be only a non-surgical and from some others we will be a lot of them. Now what about the psychological impact of this kind of surgery? We published several articles by Gemma Sharp and colleagues in the Aesthetic Surgery Journal. I'm sure you've seen some of them. Could you talk to us a little bit about that impact on patients when they have this kind of surgery? Definitely. I That's what I see in all of my patients, the, 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 their own history and what happens in their life and it's very nice. Uh, the impact, as you said, that it had, because some patients simply are ashamed of showing their external genitalia to the point that some patients can't even stay with a partner which they are not fulfilled, only to not be, to have exposed uh, to a new partner. And when they have this surgery, it's just change of life. Now they're free. Now they can go on and don't be ashamed of it. And again, and, and, and have sexual gratification because really that what that we should not be ashamed of telling that we, that's what that that's that that's why uh, sexual intercourse is there right not only for having babies right, but right. also for letting us uh, be more secure about ourselves in all of our aspects of life again uh, around our social uh, area our uh, working area and again as a couple 
So uh, this is one thing. And again, also after having a baby, um, we all know that the baby is there for nine months. Even if you have a C-section, the baby is there in your tummy for nine months, yeah. meaning uh, that baby is heavy on your muscles, the muscles that support the vagina. So even if the baby is delivered, still those muscles are going to be more relaxed when the baby, when the when the pregnancy finishes. Mm-hmm. So that's why many 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 women after having babies, they don't feel their same sexual gratification as they had before having the baby. That doesn't mean that every woman has to go uh, has to have a gender rejuvenation procedure. That's not correct mm-hmm. uh, because we sh- that that would be the same as comparing every woman that has a baby to a tummy tuck, and that's not right, right? Uh, but again, if uh, you had a baby and you feel you cannot contract the same uh, during your sexual intercourse and you discuss it sometimes with your couple and it's the sense of a couple that you don't feel good, why don't do the surgery if today you have an uh, uh, easily accessibility to do it? So again, I start uh, telling what my patients sell. Uh, usually uh, the couple comes to the office uh, concerned about it and then they're both happy. So again, I have uh, a lot of stories of the external part, uh, genital aesthetic plastic surgery of the internal part, and, and we really see that little changes make a big difference. Well, we so appreciate and value your input and also your support, the society's support of the journal. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Now, thank you again for, for really, really being up to date always and giving good scientific uh, uh, material to us, plastic surgeons. We appreciate that. Thank you.